guys, welcome back to Burns' Math Club. Today we'll be learning how to factor out a common factor in a polynomial. Here we have two examples of polynomials, each consisting of four terms. So when you're factoring out a common factor, what you're doing is you're looking for a GCF of the polynomial that, can, that you can use to factor out the polynomial. The easiest way to do this is by factoring by grouping. And this is when you take the polynomial that has four terms and you put it into two sets of binomials. So we're going to have 8p cubed and 32p squared in one set of parentheses and 28p and 112 in another set of parentheses. So now we have two binomials and it'll be easier for us to find the GCF this way. So we're going to find the GCF of each binomial. So the GCF of 8p cubed and 32p squared is 8p squared because the GCF of 8 and 32 is 8 and p cubed and p squared is p squared. Now when you divide you're left with p plus 4 because 8p cubed divided by 8p squared is p, and 32p squared divided by 8p squared is positive 4. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep that plus sign that we have in the middle, and now we're going to find the GCF of 28p and 112. The GCF of 28p and 112 is 28, and so this is a positive 28, and now we're going to divide, so we're going to be left with p plus 4, because 112 divided by 28 is positive 4. So now if you see that the two term, the binomials that's left in the parentheses, if they're the same, that means we're on the right track because they need to be the same when you're factoring out a common factor with four terms in a polynomial. So we have 8p squared and plus 28p, and then we have p plus 4 and p plus 4. So now we're almost done. All we have to do now is first write out the common factor, which is p plus 4, in one set of parentheses. And now we're going to put the 8p squared and plus 28 in the second set of parentheses. So this is how you factor out the polynomial by using a common factor. So this is our final solution, p plus 4 times 8p squared plus 28. You can always check your answer by using the distributive property. Now let's go ahead and do the second example, which is 12m cubed plus 2m squared minus 30m minus 5. So we're going to put the parentheses around the 12m cubed and the positive 2m squared, and we're going to put the parentheses around the minus 30m and the minus 5. But now here's the thing. We have to have a sign in the middle because if we just keep it like this, then it looks like we're multiplying the two binomials. But in reality, we're actually subtracting because we have that minus 30m. So let's write this out as 12m cubed plus 2m squared. And then let's put a plus sign and then we have negative 30m minus 5. So whenever you have that third term as a negative number, you're going to keep that negative sign inside, unlike what we did here because we knew that 28 was positive, so we just simply kept the positive sign outside and we didn't put a positive sign inside, which we could have done, but we don't need to because we already know that if a number doesn't have a sign, that means it's going to be positive. But when it comes to negatives, you need to keep that negative sign, and then you're going to put a plus in the middle. So now what we're going to do is simply factor. So the GCF of 12m cubed and 2m squared is going to be 2m squared squared, okay, now divide, so we're left with 6m plus 1, and then we have a plus sign, and we have to find the GCF of negative 30m minus 5. The GCF of negative 30m and negative 5 is negative 5, so if plus, plus is the same thing as plus 1, so if you multiply positive 1 times negative 5, you get negative 5, so we can just simply write this as negative 5. And now divide, so we get positive 6m plus 1. And we see that the inside terms are the same, so 6m plus 1 and 6m plus 1. So now what we do is we simply write this out as 6m plus 1 in one set of parentheses, and then we have 2m squared minus 5 in the second set of parentheses. And this is our final solution. And remember, you can always check this answer as well by simply using the distributive property. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Bye!